big hello from the Tin Man. Okay, first up, Russ and myself are holding a pulse motor build off for anybody, any design, as long as it's a pulse motor. Now, I'm a little stuck as to what to build, so what I'm going to do is build someone else's suggestion. So as I know there's a few of you out there that like this sort of thing but don't have the resources or the time or the place to build your design, now is the time to see it built. So the way you can do this is either email me um, or leave it in comments on this video or post it on one of our forums. I will s provide the link to both forums to where the Pulse Motor Build Off will be posted. Leave me your ideas and I will pick the wackiest uh, idea and I will build that machine on your behalf to the best of my ability. So the wackier the better. So all of you that want to build a pulse motor but for some reason can't, now's the time to put your idea forward. Like I said, just email me or leave some sort of description of how you see it in the comments or on either one of the two forums and I will endeavour to build that on your behalf and enter it in the competition as your entry. Okay, so we had a couple of requests to hook up our scope to the base of the transistor to see what sort of voltages are actually going into that transistor on the base side. Now I have the probe hooked up to the base and of course our earth side hooked up to the back side of our trigger coil. We are set on the 10 times on the probe. Our um, scope of course is zeroed in on the zero volt line. So we will start her up now and we will see what is happening on the base of the transistors. Okay, so I am still learning how to read scopes. I am by no means any expert on it. But from what I see here, this little line on the bottom, as you can see, starting to curve, is the power being produced from the magnet and the trigger coil, which is, of course, um, each divide is 10 volts as I have it set on 1 volt divisions and 2 milliseconds on the time divide so we're getting about 2 1.5 to 2 volts and you will see when the um, transistor fires we are putting about 11 volts um, a little less current but it's about 11 volts into the base side when the transistor switches off we get this high voltage spike going to the base as well when the coil collapses you'll also see a very faint line above that voltage which is the leftovers from the high voltage spike that the charged battery is not taking which isn't very much but it is there and it's about 38 volts but there is a very good strong current going to the base at about 21 volts. So that's how I read that. So a good indication as to why your transistors blow when you disconnect your charge battery, which I'm going to do. you will see this voltage spike that goes to the base shoots off out of the screen so 
So that's even with our neon in place, there's still a very high voltage spike going to the base. Um, so that's how I read that. I may be incorrect, but to me, that makes a whole lot of sense. So there we have about 21 volts going to the base side of the transistor with a reasonably strong current. The spike that's going to the charge battery that the charge battery isn't accepting is very, very low in current. So of course that wouldn't damage our transistor. But yes, 21 volts at a reasonably strong current right there. If someone else makes out something different from that, certainly let me know so I can learn the right way how to read these, but so far from what the book says, that is what I'm reading, about 21 volts going to the base side of the transistor when the coil fires up and collapses. Okay, here we have on a different system, old motorbike battery. Started off at about 1.2 volts. Uh, you will see the neon is still flashing. Although it has dulled right down, it was bright blue about four hours ago. And it is slowly coming up in voltage. This machine is not a very high speed or a powerful machine. We're only pulling about 112 milliamps off of our run battery. And the rest of the machine is, yes, a push cycle rim Bedini Special. The coil is wound as per their specifications. We are using ceramic magnets. And Junior currently is short of one front wheel on his push bike, so um, he's not all too happy about that. But anyway, after explaining to him the importance of experimenting, he just walked off. I will put it back together. So it is slowly bringing the battery back by the look of it. We'll give her another few hours and see how it looks. This no doubt will take a few charges and discharges to get this back to life. But so far we're looking good. So like I said, anyone that's got some crazy ideas for a pulse motor of some description, let me know. And I will choose one or maybe two depending on the difficulty of the build. And put it together, enter it as your build. And we only have two weeks to do this, so the um, quicker you get it to me, the better. Alrighty. Cheers from the Tin Man.